So there is a symbiotic relationship between the grace of God, or salvation, and worship. And symbiotic is just a big word that means you can't have one without the other. It's like breathing. You can't breathe out unless you breathe in. And you can't breathe in unless you breathe out. And it's that way with grace or with salvation and with worship. Where there is no grace to be breathed in, there is no worship to be breathed out. And there is worship to be breathed out because there was grace to be breathed in. And so we come to communion. Not a thing on the run sheet, not a sacrament of the church, but a moment to be with God, to commune with the almighty God of the universe. Can you think of it tonight? Can you imagine it tonight? I hope we haven't been in church too long. I hope we haven't come to worship too many times that we're still not blown away tonight that the King of Kings came down. And not only did he come down, he sat down at a table he prepared for you. Our shepherd prepares a table before us in the presence of our enemies, in the midst of the storm, in the midst of the battle, in the midst of a broken world, in the midst of whatever's coming against you. The Lord Almighty says, I prepare a table before you. And I come down to that table and I sit down at that table. And it's not what's at the table that's going to get you through. It's who's at the table that's going to bring you through. I want to commune with you. And the promise tonight is not that God's going to change all of our circumstances in this moment. But the promise is that he's going to sit down at a table with us. And so we want to just create some space for a moment. And we want to just breathe freedom over this room. That everyone in this room would know the King of Kings wants to commune with you. He is here in our midst. He is in this place, but he wants you. He came for you. Yes, he shed his blood for all of those who God had called, but he comes for you tonight. And I don't know where you're coming from, but I know where he's coming from. He's coming from the throne of thrones by way of Bethlehem's manger, by way of a cross where he paid for all of our sin, by way of a tomb where he defeated death and hell and sin in the grave. He comes to us now by the power of the Holy Spirit from the throne of thrones where he is seated on, on high. And he's coming for you tonight. Somehow you made it to a worship recording, but you've yet to make it all the way to salvation in Jesus. And this is going to be your moment. Your eyes are going to be open. Things are going to become clear that have never crystallized before. You're going to understand tonight like you never have before that sin doesn't make you bad. Sin makes you dead. Therefore, what you need to be working on is not being a better version of you. You need to find somebody who can bring you back from the dead. You need someone who has the gift and the power of everlasting life. And I'm telling you, he's here tonight. He said, I was dead, but I am now alive and I live forever more. And someone in this moment, you're going to reach out and take hold of salvation. You're going to understand what Jesus has done for you is finished and final and enough for all of your life and into eternity. And you're going to say, I receive Jesus, what you've done for me. For someone else, it's going to be to turn around. It's the Lord saying gently tonight, I love your enthusiasm. I love that you've lifted your hands. I love that you listen to the songs early. I love that you can kind of get on board with the melody. That's all fantastic. Now I just need you to turn away from your sin and to turn toward me. And you're going to meet Jesus when you turn around tonight in a fresh new way. 
and others of you are gonna meet him tonight and you're gonna know like you've never known before that you matter to God. You were in a room full of people. We're all lifting praises to heaven, but in some way the enemy has still convinced you that you're not enough. You didn't come from the right place. You don't have what it takes. You're not good enough. You're not smart enough. You're not pretty enough. You don't have the right family. You don't have the right abilities. You're just not enough. And he's saying, listen, I came down and prepared a table for you. I booked the table. I made the reservation. I am the meal. I want to be with you. No one's ever inviting you to anything more important than what I'm inviting you to right now. You are worth everything to me. Could you receive it? Could you believe it? Could you agree with the King of Kings and say tonight, my life matters to Almighty God. I will not live one more day speaking less of my life than what communion has already spoken over me. The lie ends here. I am a loved daughter prized by a king. I am a loved son of a perfect heavenly father, and I will walk in it, and I will proclaim it. Seven words. I said, Lord, could you just give us seven words for communion? This whole thing is about seven, then can you give us seven words? And he says, yes, Hebrews 8, verse 24. Moses had a covenant but a new covenant is coming. It is a new and a better way. It is a final and a finished way. Where with the old covenant, it had to be done year after year after year, but this new way is a final and a finished way. And he said, and I want you to, to know this is what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna write my word in people's hearts. I'm gonna write my words on their minds. And then he said these words, your sin, I will remember no more. Your sin, I will remember no more. Do you believe it?